G'day everybody and welcome to We'll Never Be Royals, the podcast where we talk about royal people. I'm LK and that's Rossi. Hey mate. G'day. Did I remember how to do the intro? Mate, it was bang on. Well done. How's your shit? Oh mate, look, last episode I was complaining about how the the Olympics is pretty bozo, but yeah. this week it is the track week and I am all about it. Here's my issue with track and field. Oh, okay, um, go on. Do we really need to throw a discus and a javelin and a shot put and make them separate? <laughs> I mean, from someone who has a track and field, I'm going to say background, but I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, they're very different events and they're very different techniques for example I was into like the power track and field so I was a sprinter I was a long jumper I was a shot putter but I couldn't do the discus Mm, different skill set so so if if shot put is power what's discus um I would say it's something to do with um agility and like mm-hmm. rotation and your core because that's how you, you you need to be able to use your body weight to throw it in a different way to the shot put. I don't know. I'm just talking out my ass. <laughs> I was just going to say. Uh, good try though. Good try. Yeah, well done. Well done. Yeah, but what about that bloody Italian bloke Winning the 100 metres on the same day as the Italian bloke and the Qatari won the high jump. Like, yeah. how good? So good. So good. As if they weren't winners enough for inventing pizza and pasta and, like, naked statues with doodles on them. Yeah. They win. Oh. I, can't, I can't believe an Italian won the 100 metres. Like, how crazy. I know. He was oh. very good, though. So good. I know, but it looks so painful when they – do the slow mo of them running? You see, like their their face fat kind of go, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because they're running very fast, mate. Yeah, yeah. it's too much. Nine point you- eight seconds. My God. Yeah, but then you see the um the long distance runners, and uh, they just look like they need to eat a pie so bad. Yeah, I know, but they are also running very fast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not to go off on an Olympic tangent, but did you see the um, cycling the other day in the velodrome and old mate's handlebars fell off? Yes, yes, I did see that. And (laughs) then all his chin and his nose and his face is just like totally ruined. Yeah, yeah. Someone writing a letter. Well, I mean, surely that's sabotage. They said they were investigating what happened which I took to mean sabotage. <laughs> so you think the Kiwis are like up in there? Yeah, like someone definitely loosened a bolt. Well, um, I didn't. I only caught half a headline, but one of the New Zealand cyclists in the same competition used to ride for Australia and his mum's from New Zealand and he didn't get into the Commonwealth Games for Australia. So he was like, fuck this, I'm going to ride for New Zealand instead. I'm just Where? saying, should we be looking at him? Yeah, I love how we can eat, we can turn anything into like a conspiracy. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's our secret <laughs> talent, really. Look, it really is. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's a great segment idea. Put that on the Trello board. Um, secret talent conspiracies. Yeah. Yep. Y- yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. It- it's on there. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of one I've heard recently, but I haven't heard any good ones. Go on. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, you're the big host, so you go on. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. I'm a bit, I'm a bit dusty. Um, royal news. It's Megs's 40th birthday. God bless her. She's 40. And what better way to celebrate your 40th than getting Oprah's party planner? And buying Harry Potter, this heaps exy cake apparently from um, bakery in Santa Barbara. I've looked it up. It's called Posies and Sugar. Oh, 
I thought she was keeping it low key. The son was like, no, nah, no cake, no Oprah, no party. She's keeping it low key and bloody Obama's out here inviting every man and his dog, even though the spicy Delta. Nah, nah, I, I, I read that it's Oprah's party planner. Oh. And Look. there's going to be grazing tables and um, uh, it's called a naked cake, which just means you can see layers between icing. It's just some bullshit. Uh, that is very, yeah, no, that is very nice. I've seen a lot of that being done with like you get like a metallic um, icing and then you like smush it in so it looks like it's an ancient um, treasure. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So happy birthday. Meg. Yeah, happy birthday, Megs, 40th. Um, remember we had plans to go to Singapore for our 40th? No recollection of that at all. What? No. I don't think oh. that was me, mate. <laughs> no, it's definitely you. Um, yeah. Well, we're def- yeah, we're definitely doing it, okay? Yeah, COVID will be over by then. Yeah, right? we've got five years. Five years. We're good. What does one do when they have a rager in Singapore? Because there's a lot of rules there. Oh, is there? I mean, but yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of bars and we're, we'll be 40. And, mate, remember that time we went to Vegas and just napped? Like, we're not rageous. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be great. Yeah. yeah. Good noodles. <laughs> um, oh, also, also, Harry and Meghan mm-hmm. have hired someone for Archwell. As in the foundation, not the child. Is in the foundation. So they have, I don't think they poached because I think she resigned, but former Disney employee, what is her name? One second. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to try and beat you. Disney. Uh, I've got the article open. I just can't see where her name is. Fucking, I'm going to tell you. Oh, it's um, a book. Ben Browning. What's his name? Ben Browning Fisnick? Oh. P-Y-S-N-I-K. Because Brit- British people with two last names are always fancy. Oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. It's Chanel Pisnick. I knew it was a woman. Oh, my God. Sorry. That's really bad. You're going to have to edit a lot of what I just said because <laughs> I'm an idiot. We, <laughs> what do we know about uh, Shanna's? Chanel. So she used to work for Disney and she was the director of international, international content for Disney and she helped stream globally and um, content for all non-US markets. So, you know, she knows her shit. Um yep. Yeah, and so Harry and Megs have hired her to run Archwell, which would be, you know, the 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 middleman between them and Netflix and all other kind of production content. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. And it tracks actually because wasn't Harry caught on footage way back in the day trying to schmooze with the head of Disney to get Megan a role? Yeah, that was, um, yeah, Hamilton opening in London. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So obviously a big interest in Disney good on him. Yeah. 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 I mean, lots of smart people work at Disney, I am sure. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Um, in other news, yep. now that Harry's flown the coop, um, Kate gets to be patron of the rugby, which I'm sure she's psyched about <laughs> not at all. <laughs> oh, that is a shit one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a real shit one, especially if you're Kate because you're just like, so much man sweat. Yeah, well, how did she get that? Surely they should have given that to Ed or someone. Even Anne, she's more tomboy than Yeah, that's true. Kate. But isn't Anne the busiest one already? Like she already takes on the most. And Does she? Yeah, she's like the hardest working one. She does the most appointments every year. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe Ed's a bit shit. Yeah, he's a bit more arty. Yeah, but like, yeah, I, I suppose Kate 
does have a sporty vibe. Yeah, she does. And she's really been rocking um, the jeans, sneakers, blazer look lately. So maybe it's just kind of matching her styling. So she's she's keen to – maybe that's what it's all about. Like what events I could go to that could match my current style ambitions. Maybe that's what it's all about. Yeah. I ha- I do recall actually seeing her in a puffer vest of late. So that, yeah. That works. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. maybe maybe she is sick of you criticising her non-sequined fashion choices. Maybe she's like, oh, that bitch on the internet keeps saying I need to wear more sequins, so I am just going to go to the rugby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Look, not the best cause and effect, but good on you, Kate. I do <laughs> – she has come good. She has really – lifted her game remember that tour of scotland they did oh yeah that was so tight yeah she's wearing colorful trenches and you know high-waisted wide leg pants yeah she's look she's she's getting it yeah she's doing okay she's no kitty spencer but she's getting there oh (laughs) oh be still my heart i can't stop thinking about kitty spencer even though there's nothing new to say yeah, I mean, last week on the pod we were banging on about the two dresses and then a couple of days later I found out there was five dresses. But if you, if you follow us on the Instagrams, you would already know that. Yeah, and she's not afraid of a sequin. Oh, she is not afraid of a sequin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she wears it in such a classy way. I'm so jealous of her. That's genetic, that class. Like you yeah. and I yeah. Nah, we can pull that off. Yeah. We can pull I don't off. You know, mate, you, 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 you look good in a sequin. Yeah, but the older I get, the bigger my boobs are, and so you have to be careful about drawing too much attention to what is already large. <laughs> Just to <laughs> lay it out there. <laughs> what an awful problem to have. Larger breasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of, actually, my best bit of royal news for the week, I don't know if you heard about this, but Eugenie and or Beatrice's husband, I can't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> These poor women, we can't even be bothered to remember which one's which. <laughs> so he was <laughs> photographed on a yacht this week with a bunch of bikini-clad women and everyone was – you know, um, in a tease about it. And Fergie came out to the press and said, don't worry, guys, it's chill. He was just doing his job because he's an ambassador for Casamigos. Oh. You know that company? Oh, yeah, that's his job apparently. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's the um, that's the one with the kid, which I think is what Eugenie. They've got a kid now. That's August's dad. That's August's dad. And isn't the other one's having a baby though, so I assume we're not going to be able to say that. Yeah, I know, right? But he's a father. He shouldn't be on a yacht with bikini-clad women. No, he shouldn't. But Fergie's cool with it, babe. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I I feel as soon as that sentence came out of my mouth, I felt awful for saying that. Like, he can do what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, if everybody's on board, great. I mean, everyone was on board. That was a great point. <laughs> Shit, we're good. We are, we are. Yeah. Um, you got any more royal news? Uh, no, that's it for me. Ah, oh, shit. Well, I might take a drink then. Okay, maybe I should widen my uh, Google alerts. Mm. I mean, I've taken to just, anyway, whatever. We don't need to get into how good I am at Google stalking both royals and regular people in my life who I'm intrigued about, but I figured it out. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Ready to get into the meat of this sandwich? (laughs) I really am because um, we are staying true to our word and doing historical royals, right? We totally are for season four, not three. Season four. Um, season four. Yeah. And so today we are covering Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolaevna of Russia, otherwise known as Anastasia, that movie was based off with the cartoons. Oh, yes. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, full disclosure, I know absolutely nothing. So tell really? me Yeah, no, nah, I don't know anything. Oh, it's like, I thought you'd know everything because everyone knows everything about this because it's like old. Well, maybe once you get going, I'll be like, oh, yeah. But um, to be honest, when you texted me yesterday to say that's who you were doing, I was like, I'm not even going to look it up because I just, I'll just learn all the things on the pod. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> oh, we've got such a good rhythm, don't we? Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, this will be good for you too because you can speak Russian. I mean, I can say fuck in Russian and little Russian sausage. That's it. Do you want to give it to us right now? I think I've said this so many times on the pod before, but I'll do it one more time. Um, okay, Malinki Kalabasar. So beautiful, mate. Yeah. You do you. sound like a bogan when you say it, though. Yeah, 100%. I have been told by Russian people that it's in a weird dialect, but maybe it's just because I um, say it like a bogan. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, well, if you have nothing to add, I'll just crack in. Yeah, please do. Please do. (laughs) All righty. So in 1901, Anastasia was born and she was the daughter of the last Tsar of Russia, whose name was Nicholas II. Yes. And, um, is he Biz's cousin or something? No, so he oh. her, Anastasia's <laughs> mother was Alexandra, and Alexandra's grandmother was Queen Victoria. Okay, so there is there is a connection to Biz. Oh, hundred percent. There's okay. so many connections to Biz. Yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Here we go again. Here we go. <laughs> um, so, uh, Sir Nicholas the Second was really shit at his job. <laughs> Um, what being really the job oh or oh, sorry or really good at his job it sort of depends on who you ask but basically what happened is um he was from a long line of czars but then like the lineage didn't really move with the times and so by the time it got to 1901 Tsar mm. Nicholas was just like not about looking after the Russian people and all about just like plating things in gold, which wasn't really cool by 1901. You know what I mean? He sounds like um, Ivana Trump because apparently that's what she used to do when her and Donald first started banking hotels. Like, like I, re- I watched this documentary and someone said if it didn't walk, she painted it gold. <laughs> Yes, exactly like that. I just want you to picture her, but like <laughs> Russian and in the 1900s. Awesome. Love it. And he like <laughs> up a few things, like got into a few wars he shouldn't have and like Europe was becoming a thing and he wasn't really thinking about that and he was just like just fucking around basically and his wife was really hot so they were boning a lot, having lots of kids. You get it? <laughs> Which was that- cool in like the 1800s but like not so much in the 1900s. Right, 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 right. He should have been pulling his head in and he didn't. Yeah, he should have been pulling his head in and like really questioning if he should have absolute rule given that he didn't really have uh, proper education and shit, you know? Yeah. Right, so at this time the Tsar is the boss of everything. Oh, mate, the boss of every fucking thing and people in Russia are hungry as shit and he just has all these palaces and like, Mm. you know, harpists playing for him on the toot probably you know like really going for it okay and um I don't know if this is a boring question but so he issued at his job and then what is this the um birth of Stalin soon after mm, no okay I think Stalin was hang on that's actually a great question and we've covered Stalin on our other podcast so I definitely should know that yeah I don't I don't mean the birth like I don't mean Stalin was born but like Stalin the the yeah, kind of so, yeah so he yeah so Stalin was alive when all this was happening and right. he came to power in 1924 so yeah mm. this is about the same time actually you're right it uh it fueled him I'm sure yes I am sure. 
Mm-hmm. I am sure. What other questions do you have? That was a great um, question. No, that's oof, too much pressure now. Keep going. I might think of another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Anastasia is the youngest of four sisters. Her sisters' names are Olga, Tatiana, and Maria, which is the most Russian shit I've ever heard. <laughs> I love Tatiana as a Russian name, but there's also one, like, I think Titsiana. That's better. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> You, you would know that. <laughs> uh, and they get titsy for short. Yeah, titsy. Wow. Maybe if I get another um, dog, I'm going to call her titsy. Oh, mate, if you get another dog, we can't be friends anymore. You can't have more pets than people. I know. Also, just sorry, sorry to um, go on a tangent, but we started watching that show um, – my unorthodox life on Netflix where the Jewish woman like leaves this really strict community oh. in her forties. Yeah. Yeah. We started watching that. It's actually really good guys. You should give it a watch. Um, but what her son, one of her sons name is Shlomo. And so Billy and I have decided that the, our next dog is going to be called Shlomo. I really like that. It's a great name. I really like that. Will it be mm-hmm. a sausage dog? Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. And then Shlomo will probably need a friend, so maybe I'll get Titsy as well. Wow. Wow. Four is definitely too many. Like you're going to start to smell <laughs> like dog in an irretrievable way. I know. I think we'll probably have to move to, a, you know, sustainable living farm on the Gold Coast or something. Yeah. Look, it's fine if you have an equal amount of humans. You know, to kind of level it out. But you don't want to be one of those people, no offense to anyone listening. You don't want to be one of those people that's like living more of a dog life than a human life because you have so many dogs. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? <clears throat> okay, all right. Yeah, yeah and that was self help corner. And that was self help. That is another great segment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mate, I've got so much bad advice to do. I just like secondhand therapy because I've got so many therapists. I just like. No, you should share that around. Yeah, I think you're supposed to be qualified if you share it around though. Yeah, except for, I mean, I hope she doesn't listen, but your food therapist telling you that it's okay to get a, you know, extra large <laughs> Coca Mocha Loca with syrup and cream from Starbucks is okay. I'm not sure about that one. Anyway, her point was A, she's definitely not listening. Um, B, her point was that the pandemic's really hard and we all need some joy in our lives. (laughs) I know, but I think she's meant to follow that up with have have a piece of fruit, like your mum would say. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't – yeah, anyway. I was going to say don't bring my mum into this, but she probably does listen, so. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, where were we? Um, Olga, Tatiana and Maria. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'll stop in. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, – when she was born, she was the first girl. I mean, sorry. When she was born, she was the fourth girl, and everyone was fucking dev because they needed a boy to continue the line. Oh. And um, Daddy Nicholas said he would give away half his empire in exchange for one boy. What? What do you mean? Like well, some I mean, hypothetical? He wasn't going to oh. give away his empire, but he wanted to. That's how badly he wanted a boy. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Um, and Anastasia is a Greek ma- name, which means of the resurrection, which will become relevant in a minute. Okay. All right. Yep. 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 No spoilers. So the girls were raised, it says really simply, they slept on hardwood floors without pillows. They took cold baths. They had to like do their chores and shit, which is lame when you're that rich. Yeah. That is yeah. so shit. Yeah. It's really shit. Um, <laughs> But I suppose what are you going to do? Like your dad, like it doesn't matter what he says to anyone. It's just like that's what happens. Is it because they're girls? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I know. And apparently her Wikipedia article says that Anastasia was short and chubby, which I think is rude. <laughs> 
It is very short. Well, it's between Victoria, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, also short, also chubby. Yeah, also short, also chubby. Um, then next minute they finally, her parents finally have a boy and everyone is like, holy shit, everything's the best. They name this boy Alexi. He's like pampered as shit. Um and because he's related to Queen Victoria and a lot of her children had haemophilia or were carriers of haemophilia, this kid also has haemophilia and is quite sickly. And everyone's like, fuck. You know, oh. we find him a boy, but he's a little bit broken. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Genetics is just unfair sometimes. Oh, isn't it terrible? <laughs> terrible, terrible. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so I always get Rasputin and Rumpelstiltskin confused. Rasputin was real. Rumpelstiltskin is from a fairy tale. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, long story short, they get so desperate for a cure for this little boy that, um, Anastasia's mum finds this like peasant man that's a healer. His name's Rasputin, not Rumpelstiltskin. Um, and she just kind of brings him into the family and gives him whatever he needs because he says he's going to heal this boy. And like, it's all a bit skeezy. Like, Rasputin is this guy with raggedy hair and he like often puts the girls to bed and like, it's all a bit funny. Like a few of the nannies are like, this isn't chill. There's a bit too much touching going on. We don't like it. And then they fire the nannies and then the nannies sell their stories to the press and then the press release like pornographic cartoons about Rasputin and the girls and nobody really knows and it's like, ooh, you know. Wow. This is happening in the early 1900s. Yeah. Yep. Yikes. Yes. Love it. I Russian know. scandal. I know. Um, and basically Alexei doesn't really get better because he can't because it's an incurable disease, um, but they keep Rasputin around and BT dubs Alexei is like a bit of a piece of shit like because he, um, <laughs> cause he just gets whatever he wants. So there's this story about him when they went on a family cruise, he like, made the orchestra wake up at 2 a.m. and play music for him when he was like three. I, oh, like, I would you do know? that too. <laughs> yeah, I know. You would do it if you could, but, like, you shouldn't. Yeah, okay. All right, mum. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so yada, 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 boring, military, boring. Uh, Zar Nicholas is shit at his job. Everyone's getting mad. There's all this protesting and shit. Uh, one thing leads to another, and in 1917, so Anastasia is 17. Um, the basically the Reds, like the the anti Tsar army, bust into the palace. They arrest the whole family and their staff, and they take them to this safe house that's not that safe. And so they're just like living under house arrest. Okay, and what, yeah, what, what is, is Rasputin still the manny? No. Nah. <laughs> Rasputin's fucked off at this point. I think he saw the writing on the wall, but it's all okay. sort of un- He's gone back to like, I think he had a wife that he mistreated terribly, you know? Yeah, he's gone back to healing commoners with potato skins. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. Right. Um, so basically they lose their power and the family just get moved around a bit for a couple of months and they sort of, they're just like sitting there, like they can't do anything. They know that like, shits hit the fan and they're fucked but like they're in prison so (laughs) fuck you know be like shit fuck damn what are we gonna do can't do anything shit fuck damn and so on and so forth (laughs) mate you should be a a teacher (laughs) (laughs) i know right a school teacher a history school teacher so good at it (laughs) i know i know Use terms that people can understand. You really cut through. I'm not being. I'm not being smart about this. I'm being genuine. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Yep. yep. We just don't get paid enough, though. So it's a yep. nice idea, but like, Jesus, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. Okay. Cut that out. That's offensive. Um. 
I'm not saying they shouldn't. I think they should, but like, ugh, I mean, they, they don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we get you. We get you. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. So, um, the the family though they can write letters, and so uh, because they are related to the British royals, they like write to the British royal family. They're like, "Fucking help us! Like, holy shit, we're gonna die!" And the British royal family are like, mm, "Not listening! Not listening! Not listening!" Yeah. So this was this would have been um, King George the Sixth, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Biz was Biz's that dad. Time. Born, yeah, Biz's no, Biz's Biz's grandfather would have been in power. Oh, so George the Fifth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's orcs for them, mm-hmm. and then um, so they have a few family jewels that they've managed to hold on to, and so they sew them into the girls' clothes to hide them because they don't want people to take them. Yep. Good idea. Yeah, it's a really good idea. <laughs> Um, so then one day, like the, the, let's say for the sake of this, we're just going to call the, I don't want to, it's complicated because I was about to say the bad guys, but then like the royal family is also the bad guys. The, the, the people that kidnapped them and put them under house arrest. The Red Army. One day, yep. One day they're just like, fuck this, we're just going to go in and kill them. So they go in, <laughs> they've got some bayonets and some guns, get the job done, but um, some of the daughters didn't die immediately because the jewels in their clothes acted as armor, like the wow. bullet shade. Wow. Yeah. 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 You've been, so, your life is saved by diamonds. How poetic. Oh, iconic. <laughs> like, truly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is storming like a motherfucker right now in Florida. Is not it? Sure. I have to say, your um, internet connection, not great. You're a bit fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you I'm sound fine. fine. You just okay, look great. a little pixelated. Oh, I mean, that is a damn shame because, again, not to go off on a tangent, but I did buy a new Barbie lipstick. Barbie lipstick? Mm-hmm. Barbie by Colourpop. Don't even worry about it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I should check up on those stocks, by the way. Um, <laughs> okay. So. They kill the whole family. Don't even worry about it. Okay. But that's because of the jewels in the clothing and the bullets ricochet, there's these rumours that maybe some of the children escaped. Okay. And and so there are sort of loose theories. I don't know why they glommed on to Anastasia in particular. Why didn't they just do a body count? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So. Um, at the time, this is kind of complicated, but basically Germany were like sort of involved with this Red Army and like there's a little bit of money changing hands in all kinds of places and they sent a telegraph after the shootings to whoever was in control and said, look, these princesses are of German blood so please like oh, yeah. deliver them safely. Right. Um, and the Russians didn't want to upset the Germans. And so they told them that, yes, the princesses were moved to a safe location. Okay. So it all became unclear whether the princesses were alive or dead. Yes, like because a, so, a safe location could mean heaven. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's also like <laughs> early 1900s when like news travels kind of slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You get it? Um, and I think people glommed on to the idea of Anastasia because, if you remember at the top, her name means of the resurrection, ah. meaning that she would be the one to rise again. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so there's all these theories. Like there's so many theories. There's too much to go in. But the main one is this woman um, who was found one day in an, an asylum in Germany who swore that she was Anastasia. Like she had this whole backstory of how a guard let her go and and basically between 1938 and 1970 they like toured this woman around to like distant relatives of the Tsar being like, do you recognise this face? Is this Anastasia? And some people were like, eh, 
yeah, maybe. And some people were like, nah. And some people were like, yeah, maybe. And it was like a thing for like decades. So it's like a, a IRL poll. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was like an IRL poll. And at the same time, there's like a few other people also popping up being like, actually, I'm Anastasia. I'm Anastasia. I'm Anastasia. And like, it's a whole bop, you know? Like, everyone's doing it. I mean, 100%, I would have given it a go. 100%. 100%. Um, so then this woman, like, gives up in 1970 because, like, no one's really listening to her. And also she has some mental health issues. So she dies in 1984. Oh, okay. And um, so then they do a DNA sample. And so this is tricky. But you remember how Biz and Philip yep. are, like, distant cousins and both descendants of Queen Victoria? Yes, yep. Yes. So they take a DNA sample from Prince Philip oh. and they match it with the DNA of this dead woman who said she was Anastasia and they don't match. So like, oh. she wasn't Anastasia. She was. Um, she had the mitochondrial DNA of a, a missing Polish factory worker. Oh, that's devastating. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I had so much hope for the end of that story. I was like, oh, my God, it's going to be her. And this is exactly what's going to happen to Secret Son Simon. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot about him. What do you think he's doing? Well, he's still in the Goldie, like photoshopping pictures. (laughs) God bless him. He's doing God's work. (laughs) <laughs> um okay but then there, here's sort of the final <clears throat> twist okay so in 1991 and they had to do this on the sly because in 1991 in russia there was just kbg running around the place everywhere and like you know you had to be careful what you were doing who you were talking to but right in 1991 this secret team went to the presumed burial site of the family where them and their servants were buried Okay. And there was supposed to be 11 bodies in there and there was only nine. So two people potentially not there. Where they could have been. Yep, the end. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. Do you think Rasputin came to the site at the shooting and rescued one and has had one, like Anastasia has been locked up in Rasputin's basement for years. Wow, that is a terrible story and absolutely not. I'd like to think that, like, if Anastasia did escape, she's, like, in the Cayman Islands living that good good, okay. you know? That just is... drinking water all day long. Yeah, okay, that's a much nicer story. No, yeah, get your head out of it. <laughs> Too many murder documentaries for me. No. <laughs> oh shit! Um, what was that? <laughs> it was just my. Don't, never mind. It was just the the walls falling in because of this storm. Was it your um, vibrator? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was just my charger. <laughs> okay. Contrary Whatever. to popular opinion, I don't just keep my vibrator like <laughs> out next to my computer. But I could. No judgment. Yeah. So that's uh, fucking <clears throat> Grand Duchess Anastasia of the fucking shit czar. <laughs> Again, you should be a history school yeah. teacher. Oh, BT Dubs, have you watched that um, uh, Elle Fanning show, The Great? No, I haven't. Is it good? Uh, yeah, you should. It's really funny. And it's about the Russian czars. It's not about Nicholas. I think it's about the one before him and how his wife, like the czar's a bit of a moron and his wife's really smart and she like fixes shit but doesn't fix it enough because then Nicholas comes in and is really shit at his job. Ah, uh, okay. No, I, I might give that a bill. Yeah, do it. It's really fun. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, queries, comments? Um, no, that was great. And um, I learned a lot mm-hmm. and I didn't know much about that. Um, 
uh, sh- sh- I don't want to. I'm not the big host, but should we do no, the next? I was just, well, yeah, I was just going to ask you, how do we play page ten again? Um, so <laughs> we Google Anastasia. Yep. Um, should we just Google Anastasia and then go to, or should we be a bit more specific? Yeah. Or no, Russian? Let's okay. Go to ten. Go to page ten. I've got that song in my head too now. That Ra Ra Rasputin, leader, lover of the Russian queen. You know that one? You know, no, you do know a lot. It's um, I don't know. They play it in spin all the time. Uh, yeah, yep, yep. I remember exercising. <laughs> Um, okay, what have you got? All right, I have got a uh, a lot of yoga instructors called Anastasia um, across the world, and uh, um, that's about it. <laughs> okay, I am clicking on this Anastasia. Original Broadway cast recording compilation. You would come across that. (laughs) Wow. So it was a Broadway musical as well. (gasps) Yeah, based on the uh, cartoon, I think. Wow. You'd actually probably be really great in that role. You speak Russian. (laughs) Can't sing. Um, (laughs) Acting. It's very questionable. Dance retired, so probs not. Yeah, okay. But you, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know the difference now between Rumpelstiltskin and Rasputin? <laughs> That's true. Even, even, yeah. That's true. Guys, the page 10 game is hard when you just put in Anastasia. Yeah, maybe we should put Daughter of Tsar. Yeah, or Grand Duchess. Oh, Grand Duchess, is that her name? Okay. Yeah. Page tenors. Uh, all right, what you got? Um, I got, uh, oh, here we go, a tweet. Stand by. Oh, it's just um, Grand Duchess Anastasia. Oh, oh there's a... um. I don't know if this is real or not, but it's like a selfie that Anastasia took of herself from 1916. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's probably fake, <laughs> but I'm going to post it on the facey anyway. Okay. Um, yeah, what are you I, I have clicked on an article from thevintagenews.com and it is Anna Anderson, the woman who convinced the world she was a Grand Duchess Anastasia of Russia. So it's all about the Polish factory worker. Oh. Does Anna, does they have photos of Anna and does she look like a Russian princess? Um, They do have this kind of Photoshopped picture of a woman and then a child. There's lots of pictures of Anastasia. Oh, yeah, there's one of Anna Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, but we already know that she's not, so. I know, but it's, it's you know, it's it's interesting to think that she was so convinced of this. I know. I'm going to real quick look up the other ones to see <clears> if they um, have been disproven. Even, I know that we're about to wrap the episode, but just in case. Wow. Just in case in the last five minutes we can solve the mystery ourselves. Yeah, Anderson justified her rude and difficult behaviour as caused by the questioning of her identity. She continued changing residences, travelling among the various castles and royal homes of her supporters. Wow. Wow. So, like, people got really into it. Yeah. I mean, good for her. Oh, she met the son of Dr. Yevgeny Botkin, who was murdered with the Romanovs in... Ekaterinburg. <laughs> yeah. Gleb became Anderson's greatest supporter and who later provided her with an attorney. Wow. That's a nice story and very sad. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So she was hurt in a factory explosion and then she went missing. And the, the timeline of this event coincided with Anderson's arrival in Berlin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whoops. I mean, she, he, life gives you lemons. She figured it out, man. Yeah. 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 And then I she mean, moved to Ruth. Yeah, exactly. And she moved to America, got married, and then lived there until 1984. Good on you, mate. Yeah, good on you. I mean, I don't, I you know, I don't condone um, being, you know, uh, giving people false, false hope. But also, like, it's, that sounds way more fun than sitting in a German insane asylum for the rest of your life. Yeah, I know. But, like, wh- what do you think is the truth? Do you think that she knew she was the Polish factory worker or do you think that she believed she was Anastasia? That's the interesting thing. I like that thing. story. I like yeah. that story better. Yeah. 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 Delusion is sometimes good. Yeah. But I, I think because she lived with that for so long, like, you know, t- sometimes when you, you tell people a story and you continue to tell the story and it changes a little bit every time. And then yeah. the, the final story that you're telling people, you believe that's true. Like she probably got to that point. Yeah. It's like when you told me that we agreed to have our 40th in Singapore, <laughs> like, <laughs> No idea. <laughs> We're definitely doing that. We've definitely had that conversation. It's happening. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. I just, I don't think that conversation ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> mate, that was a great circle back. Well done. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, should we wrap this shit up? So, yep. uh, look, we do have a Twitter. We're not really tweeting right now, but it's been on our <laughs> trolley board for a long time and we're definitely going to get to it soon. Uh, we've revamped the website. We're going to have a newsletter. We're on Facey, Obvi. We're back on the Instagram after summer vacay. Uh, you can get more of our pods on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, we got some shit hot merch. We're going to have more. And uh, write us an email at hello at lkmrossi.com because we love to party with you digitally. Yeah, wow. Well done, LK. And also um, we discussed uh, we discussed prior to recording the pod, just in case you forget, like the time you forgot about us going to Singapore for our 40th, um, posting the unedited oh video recording on youtube so if you um really stand us and you want more you we're gonna post the full recording of the pod um on youtube and you will discover how good our editing ability is when you listen <laughs> to the yeah pod. and look apologies in advance if i'm caught on camera picking my nose because <laughs> gotta get up there we all do it it's time to lessen the stigma <laughs> Anything else you want to air in advance? Um, no, I'm I'm pretty good. Like I watch my mannerisms while I'm on camera, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Except at a work meeting, I 100% pull faces and roll my eyes in work meetings, 100%. Yeah. Well, I mean, they deserve it, do they not? Yeah. If you're going to say stupid things, I'm going to pull faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Okay. <laughs> Um, Russia. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have to say the outro bit. Oh, okay. Um, thanks for listening. See you all of a sudden. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah, that was good. <laughs>